Dango, so up uh, I'd like to do this capsule today on uh, just touching on a few subjects. Uh, subjects that are of pretty high importance. Uh, I wanted to start today with, uh, I know you've all heard on the news uh, last couple of weeks, uh, the death of Joyce Echaquan from uh, the Atikamek Nation of Manwan. Uh, her death at the hospital was a tragic one. It was compounded by uh, uh, racist lace uh, slurs towards uh, Mrs. Echequan uh, by the nursing staff, which triggered a, a big uproar in Quebec and First Nations uh, territories, and demanding that the Premier of Quebec finally recognize that there is systemic racism within the system. The Premier has always failed, he's always fallen short of saying that there is systemic racism. And it's in all the systems, whether it's in justice, health, uh, economic development, uh, the many areas where racism uh, may not be full blown, but uh, it still exists. So by ignoring the fact that it exists, then there's nothing to seem to want to do about it. So we're going to keep pressure on the Quebec government. As a matter of fact, the pressure uh, did mount as far as uh, uh, taking uh, Sylvie Damo, who was the uh, Native Affairs Minister for Quebec, and taking her off the portfolio and replacing her with uh, a Mr. Yann uh, Lafreniere. Uh, I don't know Mr. Lafreniere yet, but uh, I'm sure I'll have some discussions with him soon to discuss some of the issues that are of uh, importance to Ganasadaga and to all First Nations of Quebec. So, uh, on behalf of Ganasadaga, to the Echequan family, to the Echequan family's uh, territory, I want to give us give our deepest condolences for their loss and uh, just a terrible way on how they, they lost their mother, their wife, their daughter, granddaughter. Uh, Ms. Eche, Mrs. Echequan uh, leaves behind uh, seven children. The youngest one was, I believe, seven months old. So it's tragic in so many ways. So our, hug, our, hug, our heart goes out to the Atikamek people and uh, hope that their healing is done through the appropriate time. So uh, the other subject I wanted to touch on was uh, we have policies uh, that we've worked on here uh, with, the, uh, with the ERU back to work policies trying to deal with the COVID situation while still trying to deliver as best a service as we can to our band members. Uh, it hasn't been easy. Uh, there's been, uh, let's say, uh, some, um, some fallout because of that. Uh, some don't want to exactly follow the rules. Uh, so we're trying to adjust as we go along. Uh, the same thing goes with the back to school policy. I know we were supposed to go back to school a couple of weeks ago, but seeing as the COVID situation started getting worse, uh, it didn't seem like the right thing to do at the time. I know that the children need that time to socialize, but the risk of bringing this virus uh, from any other door, like education or even the band office or any other service, uh, the risk is still quite high. So we're asking people to be patient. We all want our kids back to school. We all want a normal life again. But under these circumstances, it's really risky for our community right now. So uh, I'm really uh, grateful for your understanding and uh, hope we can get this uh, back on track soon. The other one, uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about was um, uh, okay, some of the progress uh, in the last couple of months, uh, I've still been working very hard, uh, working remotely uh, wherever I can, and still making my calls with uh, various ministers at the federal level and provincial too. So we're still trying to make progress on policing files, economic development, uh, environment was a big one. Uh, so we're working on trying to find better solutions uh, while trying to adapt to this COVID situation. So I'm going to have some uh, important information to share uh, fairly soon. Uh, the ministers are very open to helping Ganesadaga at this time on uh, 
many of these issues I mentioned. So uh, we'll move on with um, uh, the GNR uh, clarifications. Uh, many of you have uh, heard lately that the provincial government re, uh, revoked its permit to GNR. And I just want to restate that GNR, at the beginning of this thing, there was a resolution that permitted GNR to exploit the site under certain conditions. Council had adopted uh, environmental regulations, uh, both federal and provincial, and that these conditions had to be respected. Now, under the provincial regulation, it was the same thing. Now, CNS Council does not have any enforcement capabilities, uh, either for testing or just uh, generally... Uh, stopping any abuse. So it fell squarely on the provincial government, who was the permit giver. And they did find GNR, uh, but they had a, an obligation to keep an eye on the situation and do the testing, uh, do on-site inspections. Problem with Quebec is that it only has six inspectors for the entire province. Uh, we really don't have any. And the problem isn't just concentrated at GNR. Uh, as many of you know out there, it's been a problem that's been ongoing throughout the community for uh, several years. I've been dealing with it since 2012. And I've seen the provincial and federal governments, when we're asking for the enforcement capabilities, the resources necessary to stop this, or at least put some decent regulations in place. But they keep tossing the ball to one another. And in the meantime, we're all paying for it. So... We have some solutions with GNR, the possibility of bringing in technology where we could take what's already on the site and incinerate it through this technology, which doesn't release any toxic uh, fumes or smoke and generate electricity, or we can make a substance called graphene, where it breaks down the materials, the organic materials that might be there, plastics as well, and bring, in the car bring it down to its carbon. And that carbon can be used again to make uh, anything from cell phones to glasses to car parts. So we can take that negative part of GNR and do something very positive and green with it. And again, uh, the government estimated that the site would cost some, somewhere between 70 to $100 million to clean up. If the technology is worth 10, 20 million, I think the math speaks for itself. So. We're going to be pushing on that to, uh, to resolve that problem. Instead of having the same truckers, imagine this. If we had to haul everything out, if the government paid for it to get it hauled out, the same truckers who brought the stuff in will now benefit again by getting paid to bring the stuff out. I don't think that's fair. So we're going to do something different, a solution that will be beneficial to all. Now, the last subject I wanted to touch on was uh, a very important one lately. The mayor of Volca has decided that he was going to implement some consultations on designating uh, part of the pines, which uh, everybody uh, uh, knows as the Galen lands. Uh, 170 acres of pine forest uh, uh, is going to be up to uh, consultation. What the mayor wants to do is he wants to designate that part of the pines as part of Quebec's heritage. Now, Quebec does not have its heritage here. It's our heritage. And the way he's going about the consultation is also a viol violation of uh, Supreme Court decisions, uh, especially under Corbière, where they, they have to consult us. Under Haida, Delgamok, the consultations uh, have to be held. And... If they don't respect that, uh, MCK is going to uh, mandate its uh, legal uh, its legal counsel to take uh, action on behalf of the community. So um, we're going to be keeping a close eye out on that. So for the moment, uh, that's what I have today. I hope uh, all of you stay safe. And I hope we can get back to normal as soon as possible. Yalla, on up.